Well, they're the most famous couple in tennis, safe to say, between them winning a staggering 30 Grand Slam titles. It's just incredible what they've achieved. And we're talking, of course, about Andre Agassi and Steffi Graf. They are back in Melbourne together for the first time, can you believe, in 15 years. Yeah, and this was their happiest hunting ground of all. They both won the Australian Open four times and actually had the pleasure of sitting down with both of these legends to talk about life, love and, I guess, a bit of tennis as well. <laughs> Have a look. <laughs> I feel like I'm in the presence of greatness. We've got eight Australian Open titles between the two of you. Does Melbourne hold a bit of a special place in your heart? Oh, absolutely, yes. A lot of memories. I think I'm on both sides. I mean, mm. mine going as far back as still playing at Kuyan. <laughs> so that's really going far back. So yeah, a lot of great memories. You got any favorite memories from here, Andre? Oh, I don't know how to separate them. This was my most successful stop of the whole year, it seems. I mean. Every time I came down here, I felt rested, I felt physically prepared, and, and then you add the good sporting spirit that everybody has down here, and it just, it just felt like it was magic. Back in Melbourne for the first time in 15 years, these two superstars still have pulling power like few others. Relax, guys, relax. Anything on your to-do list while you're in Melbourne this time? No, I mean, I, I'm going to be back at uh, the tournament for the first time in 15 years. So I think <laughs> I'll see, you know, quite a big change. I've seen it in the city, just even driving in and the skyline that has changed dramatically in 15 years. What's changed in Andre in 15 years? <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> my, my waistline. <laughs> <laughs> Not my hairline. My hairline stayed. <laughs> His hair wasn't always like this, though. Back in the 80s, with his wild fashion and signature mullet, Agassi was one of the original tennis wild childs. Early days, you had a bit of a reputation there as a bad boy. When you look at the likes of Nick Kyrgios, Bernard Tomic here in Australia, I mean, they're all over the headlines and mainly for the wrong reasons. What would be your advice to those kind of players? I sort of try to highlight, you know, just how difficult it is to to grow up, period, let alone in the public eye, you know, and the one thing you hope for from a distance is that these moments in their life are appreciated or, you know, taken in and, and, and learned from, you know. If you, if you lose and you don't learn something from it, it's, that's all it is, is a loss. And if you say something regretful and, you know, you don't learn from it, then all you did was hurt. So as a result, you, you, hope, that, you hope that they figure, you know, figure their way with as little pain as possible. Away from the court, family is Andre's life these days. He and Steffi very rarely do interviews, instead enjoying a quiet existence, raising their two children. In fact, Andre never leaves home without this necklace his son made for him, saying, Daddy rocks. You still got the necklace there? Yeah, I promise there's It's holding on. It's holding on, barely, but you know, it's about 12 years now, so. Uh, my, our son made this for me when, I, when he was five, so 12 years ago. Um, and he needed help, and I was like, what do you need help with? And he, I said, he said, I want to do an art project for you. And I said, okay, how can I help? He goes, how do you spell Daddy Rocks? <laughs> <laughs> so he made it, and I kept it. It's important to me. If there was a, God forbid, something happened to it, I'd be devastated. <laughs> for two legends of the game, there is a refreshing lack of ego here. Recently, Serena Williams overtook you on the list of all-time Grand Slam title winners in the Open era. Was there a little part of you that thought, oh, come on, I wouldn't mind hanging on to that title? <laughs> no, I'm, I can't. I, you know, I, I feel what she's accomplished. I have nothing but respect and admiration um, when I see what she, what she achieves and now having a child and, and still being out there determined and just an incredible competitor. Um, you know, it's just amazing. And she's not done yet. You've got two kids. Could you imagine ever being on the tour with the little ones? No. <laughs> no. I, she I, was. You were just on, uh, on the men's tour yeah, with me. I, yeah. yeah. It, it, was, it was a different challenge <laughs> traveling with, uh, with, with young kids. And I can't even imagine than even, you know, being on the court and playing. Do you miss picking up the racket at all? Or is it uh, <laughs> a much more comfortable and happy life without it? Yeah, very different life, you know. It feels, it, it felt really good stepping away from it. I think it was a great time in my life, and uh, I felt like I gave my sport everything, everything that I had, and, and I was really ready, I think, for the next stage in life. You know, once in a while we get out on the court, but the body doesn't quite feel like it wants to anymore. 
but uh, you know, it's it's uh, been been very pleasant. Do you get be competitive when you two get out on the court together? Oh, no, we just don't try not to get hurt. <laughs> there's no competitiveness at all. For the last decade, the couple has worked alongside watchmaker Longines, helping to raise money for the Steffi Graf and Andre Agassi Foundation. They care very much about what's important to us and um, you know, support us in our en endeavours in helping children. Andre with education for me with traumatised children, so it's been, uh, it's been uh, incredible to have mm -hmm. partners like that on our side. A lot of shared values with the overlap of, of you know, the, the, the desire to do well and do good and we started focused on the foundation and it's just growing and inspires us daily and 11 years later almost we're still, still feeling like it's the right thing. What I love from talking to you two is this sense that there's a lot more to life than tennis. You were great at that, but there's a lot more to the picture. <laughs> well, tennis is what you do, it's not who you are, so you kind of have to figure it out along the way. And uh, we had so many passions that the transition was pretty seamless in both our individual experiences and then collectively being with each other has even made it that much, uh, that much easier. What a lovely chat. Really nice chat. Just a lesson in humility mm, there. They are perspective. really lovely people.